In the quiet suburban streets of Howard Beach, New York, beneath the facade of a typical American family home, lies a tale of terror and survival. Picture a seemingly ordinary household, but behind closed doors, a retired NYPD officer, Raymond Sheehan, wielded power with impunity. Within these walls, Barbara Sheehan endured years of unspeakable torment, subject to the physical and psychological abuse of her husband. But on one fateful day, the facade shattered and the horrors hidden within came to light. In a desperate bid for survival, Barbara made a decision that would change everything. With a single gunshot, she sought to break free from the chains of fear which bound her to her abuser. As the echoes of the gunshot faded, Barbara's journey through the criminal justice system began. It's a journey marked by twists and turns, with each revelation peeling back the layers of a complex narrative. This isn't just the story of one woman's fight for freedom. It's a tale which raises profound questions about the nature of justice, the complexities of self-defense, and the enduring legacy of domestic violence. Join us as we delve into the gripping case of Barbara Sheehan, a story which transcends the boundaries of law and morality, leaving an indelible stain on all those who dare to listen. Hello and welcome back to Memento Mori Stories. I'm Ala Favela, your host and partner in crime when it comes to exploring the dark and disturbing sides of human nature. If you're into coffee, creativity, horror, and true crime, then you've stumbled upon your people. Whether you've been chilling with us for a while or you're just popping in for the first time, I'm stoked to have you here. So pull up a chair and let's dive into some mind-bending tales. Before we get too much further into it, let me give you a little insider tip. If you're all about stories that make you think, challenge your perspective, and maybe even keep you up at night, then hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell are a no-brainer. It's like finding a club of fellow truth seekers who aren't afraid to wander into the unknown. And hey, if you're curious about what goes on behind the scenes, Come hang with me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. We've always got some cool stuff brewing over there, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. You'll find all my social links on screen right now and clickable in the description box down below. Oh, and here's a little something for my Instagram crew. My 250th follower over at Memento Mori Art will win a free painting by yours truly shipped directly to you anywhere in the world absolutely free of charge. It's my way of giving back to my community and thanking you for your ongoing support. Honestly, it means the world to us. By subscribing and following, you're not just another listener, you become a part of our inner circle. So, if you're ready to dive headfirst into the weird and wonderful world of Memento Mori stories, hit that subscribe button, give us a follow, and welcome to the family. Also, before we go any further, I need to give you a heads up. We're going to be delving into some heavy themes today, including domestic violence, assault, and the legal maze that surrounds them. These are heavy topics, and if you feel like it's too much for you today, it's totally fine to take a step back. Your well-being comes first. If you're grappling with any of these issues or you're carrying the weight of past trauma, I want you to know that you have some options here. You can skip this video if you need to, maybe share it with a friend or a loved one you trust, or even reach out to a professional for support. In the description below, we've put together some resources and links for you that you may find helpful. It's important to understand that we're not here to sensationalize or to exploit the darker sides of human experience. Our goal is to shine a light on them, to foster understanding and empathy. Talking openly about these subjects helps us to break the silence and reduce the stigma, which can lead to healing on both a personal and societal level. So, without further ado, let's dive into Barbara Sheehan's story together. A story which not only fought for justice, but also sparked a conversation 
spurred legislative changes and united voices in a call for a better world. Barbara Sheehan, a resident of Howard Beach, New York, appeared to live a typical suburban life. Married to Raymond, a retired NYPD officer, Barbara was a devoted wife and mother to their two children. However, behind the closed doors of their home, a darker reality would unfold. For years, Barbara endured relentless abuse at the hands of her husband. The abuse, both physical and psychological, would cast a long shadow over her life, leaving scars that ran deeper than any physical wound. Despite their facade of normalcy, Barbara's existence was marred by the torment of domestic violence. She navigated the treacherous waters with unwavering determination, desperate to shield herself and her children from any harm. Raymond's status as a former law enforcement officer only added layers of complexity to the situation, intensifying Barbara's fear of retaliation and her belief that seeking help would be futile. As the abuse escalated over time, Barbara found herself trapped in a cycle of violence from which escape seemed impossible. Yet, she remained steadfast in her commitment to her family, clinging to the hope that someday, somehow, she would find a way out of the darkness which engulfed her life. Before the abuse, Barbara and Raymond's marriage seemed like the picture-perfect suburban union. They were high school sweethearts who'd grown up together and their love story was one that many envied. They shared a home, raised their children, and navigated life's many ups and downs together. However, beneath the surface, cracks began to appear as Raymond's behavior became increasingly controlling and volatile. Despite the challenges they faced, Barbara remained dedicated to her family, doing her best to maintain a sense of normalcy for her children. She juggled the responsibilities of homemaking and parenting while silently enduring the abuse which lurked behind closed doors. Raymond's position as a former police officer only served to amplify her fear as she grappled with the knowledge that seeking help could have serious consequences. The dynamics of their marriage shifted gradually as Raymond's behavior grew more and more unpredictable. What had once been a loving and supportive union devolved into a nightmare of manipulation and violence. Barbara found herself walking on eggshells, constantly on edge, never knowing when the next outburst would occur. Despite her best efforts to appease her husband and to keep the peace, the abuse only intensified, leaving her feeling trapped and alone. In the eyes of the outside world, Barbara and Raymond's marriage may have seemed idyllic, but behind closed doors, it was anything but that. Their home, once a sanctuary of love and security, would become a battleground where Barbara would fight tirelessly to protect herself and her children from the horrors that lurked within. Yet, despite the darkness which surrounded her, she clung to hope, believing blindly that someday, somehow, she would find the strength to break free and reclaim her life. On the night of February 18th, 2008, the Sheehan household was forever altered. The evening began like any other, with Barbara going about her routine tasks, unaware of the tragedy that would soon unfold. However, lurking beneath the surface of domestic normalcy was a powder keg of tension and fear primed to explode at any moment. As Barbara went about her evening, Raymond's behavior grew increasingly erratic and hostile. The atmosphere in the Sheehan household crackled with tension as his simmering anger threatened to boil over. Throughout the evening, his actions became increasingly aggressive and unpredictable, leaving Barbara on edge and fearful for her safety. In a moment of sheer panic, Raymond's rage reached a fever pitch, culminating in a violent outburst that shattered the fragile semblance of peace within their home. 
Faced with the looming threat of her abuser, Barbara's survival instincts kicked into overdrive. In a desperate bid to protect herself and her children, Barbara made a split-second decision. Armed with a handgun, she confronted her husband, the weapon a last resort in the face of imminent danger. The events would unfold in a blur of motion and adrenaline as she fought for her life against her husband. In the chaos of the moment, shots rang out, the sound of gunfire piercing the once quiet suburban neighborhood. The details of the shooting were harrowing, with each moment etched into Barbara's memory with painful clarity. In the heat of the moment, her thoughts raced, her actions guided by a primal instinct simply to survive at all costs. As the chaos would subside, the aftermath of the violence lay scattered around her, a stark reminder of the tragedy which had just unfolded in their midst. In the aftermath of the shooting, Raymond lay lifeless on the floor, his reign of terror brought to a sudden and definite end. Barbara, shaken but alive, would find herself thrust into the unforgiving embrace of the criminal justice system, her actions scrutinized by a society grappling with the complexities of self-defense and the rights of survivors of abuse. Barbara Sheehan's trial would become a gripping saga that captured the nation's attention, immersing spectators into the heart of a case which delved into the dark complexities of domestic violence and self-defense. As the proceedings unfolded, the courtroom transformed into a crucible of emotion, where the truth behind years of abuse was finally laid bare for all to witness. 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 One of the pivotal moments of the trial was the testimony of Raymond Jr., Barbara and Raymond's son. Taking the stand, he would bravely recount the harrowing experience him and his family endured at the hands of his father. His words painted a vivid picture of the pervasive nature of the abuse within the Sheehan household, revealing the terror and the trauma that had plagued their lives for years. Throughout his testimony, Raymond Jr. offered a poignant glimpse into the reality of domestic abuse, shining a light on the silent struggles of countless families throughout the country. Throughout the trial, Barbara's defense team meticulously pieced together the narrative of her life as a survivor of abuse. Witnesses took the stand, each one offering a different glimpse into the horror that Barbara had endured behind closed doors. They spoke of the pattern of control and manipulation which characterized Barbara and Raymond's marriage, highlighting the relentless cycle of violence which had left Barbara feeling trapped and alone. Their testimonies painted a chilling portrait of the horrors Barbara had faced, underscoring the urgency of her actions on that fateful night. In contrast, the prosecution sought to portray Barbara as a cold-blooded murderer, intent on taking the life of her husband in a fit of rage. They argued that her actions were premeditated and calculated, a narrative which clashed with the reality of her life as a victim of abuse. However, as the trial progressed, it became increasingly clear that Barbara's actions were rooted in a desperate bid for survival, driven by years of torment and fear. As the jury deliberated Barbara's fate, the nation waited with bated breath, acutely aware of the profound implications of their decision. On October 6, 2011, after weeks of deliberation, Barbara Sheehan was found not guilty of murder, a verdict which reverberated throughout the legal community and sparked renewed conversations about the realities of abuse and the need for greater support for survivors. While Barbara was acquitted of murder, she was convicted on a lesser charge of possessing an illegal firearm. On November 10th, 2011, she was sentenced to five years in prison, a decision which would elicit mixed reactions from the public. Some viewed the sentence as a miscarriage of justice, arguing that Barbara had already endured years of abuse and should not be further punished for defending herself. 
others saw it as a necessary consequence of Barbara's actions, underscoring the importance of upholding the law and preserving public safety. In the aftermath of the trial, Barbara's story continued to resonate with people around the world, serving as a rallying cry for survivors of abuse everywhere. Her case inspired renewed efforts to raise awareness about the realities of abuse and the urgent need for societal change. As Barbara stepped out of the courtroom and into a new chapter of her life, she did so as a symbol of resilience and hope, a beacon of light in the darkness of domestic violence. Though it is always difficult for a woman to leave her abuser, when an abuser holds a position of public power or influence, there are additional hurdles to consider in regards to answering the question, why doesn't she just leave him? When the spouse of a police officer becomes a victim of domestic abuse, seeking help is even more daunting and complicated. Here's just a few examples of how this can be the case. First of all, you have the fear of retaliation. Imagine that you're married to someone who knows the ins and outs of law enforcement. If they're abusive, they're going to use that knowledge to intimidate or to threaten you, which will leave you feeling trapped and powerless. Next, you have a lack of trust in law enforcement. I mean, it's hard to feel safe when your abuser is a part of the very system you're supposed to turn to to protect you. Victims often worry that the police will prioritize their colleague over their safety, which makes them hesitate to report. You've also got social isolation. Picture being part of a very tight-knit community, just like the police force and their spouses. If you're experiencing abuse, you might worry about facing judgment or backlash from your partner's colleagues or even your own friends, which makes it hard to reach out. And then you also have your spouse's professional reputation. Reporting that abuse would have serious repercussions for their career which adds another level of stress, you might be torn between your own safety and the potential impact on your partner's professional life. Which of course leads to my last point, internalized stigma, where victims of domestic violence often blame themselves or feel ashamed of what's happening to them. This blame of self makes it so much harder to ask for help, especially when you're worried about how others especially your spouse and his colleagues, might perceive you. So in Barbara Sheehan's case, her husband's background as a retired NYPD officer likely made seeking help very challenging. The fear of retaliation, the distrust of law enforcement, and the concerns about her husband's reputation all likely played a role in her decision to stay silent about what she was going through. Her story sheds light on the unique barriers that victims of domestic violence face when their abusers hold positions of authority within society. society. When a police officer is the perpetrator of domestic violence, the situation becomes even more complex and challenging for the victim. Not only do they face the typical obstacles that many survivors encounter when seeking help, they also have to navigate the added layers of power dynamics and potential backlash associated with law enforcement. Police officers are entrusted with upholding the law and protecting the public, but when they become the perpetrators of violence within their own homes, it can be particularly difficult for their partners to seek assistance. This is due in part to the unique dynamics of power and control which exist within law enforcement relationships, as well as the institutional barriers that can prevent victims from accessing support. Research has shown that police officers are disproportionately likely to engage in domestic violence as compared to the general population. A study published in the Journal of Family Violence has found that domestic violence rates among police officers are two to four times higher than those in the general population. This alarming statistic underscores the prevalence of domestic violence within law enforcement communities and highlights the urgent need for systemic change. Victims of domestic violence perpetrated by police officers often face significant challenges when attempting to report the abuse. They may fear or face retaliation from their domestic partner, 
who may use their position of authority to manipulate or intimidate them into silence. Additionally, victims may worry about the potential repercussions of speaking out against a police officer, including the loss of support from their partner's colleagues or superiors. The issue of police-perpetrated domestic violence also raises concerns about accountability and transparency within law enforcement agencies. There is often a lack of accountability for officers who engage in abusive behavior, leading to a culture of impunity, which enables further abuse. Victims may feel powerless to hold their abusers accountable, further exacerbating their sense of isolation and of hopelessness. Furthermore, the intersection of police-perpetrated domestic violence and police brutality highlight the interconnected nature of systemic issues within law enforcement. The same power dynamics which enable domestic violence within police households can also contribute to the excessive use of force and other forms of misconduct within the field. In light of these challenges, it is essential for law enforcement agencies to take proactive steps to address and to prevent domestic violence within their ranks. This includes implementing comprehensive training programs, establishing clear policies and procedures for addressing domestic violence allegations, and holding officers accountable for their actions. By addressing the root causes of police-perpetrated domestic abuse and promoting a culture of accountability and transparency, we can work towards creating safer and more supportive environments for all members of law enforcement and their families. If someone you love discloses domestic abuse to you, it's crucial to respond with empathy, support, and action. Here are some steps that you can take. First, listen and believe. The first and most important step is to listen to the survivor without judgment and to believe their experiences. Validation and support can be incredibly empowering for survivors. Next, offer practical support. Provide information about available resources and support services such as domestic violence hotlines, shelters, counseling services, and legal assistance. Offer to help the survivor to access these resources if needed. Next, you can get into safety planning. Work with the survivor to develop a safety plan tailored to their individual needs and circumstances. This may involve identifying safe places to go, creating a code word or signal for emergencies, and developing strategies for de-escalating dangerous situations. Next comes reporting. Encourage the survivor to report the abuse to the appropriate authorities, whether that's law enforcement, child protective services, or any other relevant agencies. Offer to support them through the reporting process if they choose to take this step. And finally, follow up regularly. Continue to check in with the survivor and offer ongoing support and assistance as needed. Domestic violence is a complex and ongoing issue, and survivors may need support long after initial disclosure. To my fellow survivors, I want you to know that I see you, I hear you, and I am so proud of you. This road to healing is daunting at times, but you're not alone. Your strength knows no bounds, and although the journey ahead may be difficult, it holds the promise of growth and renewal. Let's start by acknowledging the bravery it takes to embark on this path of transformation. Healing isn't linear, so every step you take, big or small, deserves recognition. Be kind to yourself. Your worth transcends any scars from your past. Reaching out for support is a crucial step forwards. You don't have to face this alone. Whether it's leaning on your friends, family, or support groups, surrounding yourself with a support system makes all of the difference. When you're ready, sharing your story helps break the silence that often cloaks survivors. Your voice is powerful, and by speaking up, you chip away at the stigma which surrounds domestic abuse. Seeking professional help is another important part of your journey. 
Therapists, counselors, and support organizations are there to offer tailored guidance and assistance. Utilize resources like counseling, hotlines, and legal aid, knowing that they were designed to help empower you on your path to recovery. Creating a safety plan is crucial for regaining control of your life. You can check out my free safety planning guide in the link tree in the description box below. This is full of practical strategies I personally used when leaving my own abuser. It includes steps like finding safe spaces, setting up communication channels, and connecting with local shelters or support networks. In the resources in the description box below, you'll find a wealth of carefully curated links to help support you. From crisis helplines to legal aid, these tools are here to help you every step of the way. Remember, accessing these resources is an act of self-empowerment and a testament to your determination to step away from abuse. As you journey forward, focus on rebuilding your sense of self and rediscovering your passions. Engage in activities that bring you joy and fulfillment, whether it's diving back into old hobbies or discovering new ones. Surround yourself with positivity and people who lift your spirits. Your journey is uniquely yours and there's no rush. Honor every step forward, no matter how small. Take a moment to explore the community of support waiting for you in the description. Your story is one of resilience and strength, and I believe in the brighter tomorrow that awaits you. Barbara Sheehan's story shed light on the complexities and challenges faced by victims of domestic violence, particularly when their abuser holds a position of authority within society. Her experience navigating the legal system and seeking justice for the abuse she endured highlights the pervasive nature of domestic violence and the urgent need for systemic change. Barbara's journey serves as a powerful reminder of the resilience and courage of survivors, as well as the importance of amplifying their voices and advocating for their rights. Her case sparked national conversations about the realities of abuse and the need for greater support and resources for survivors, particularly those who face additional barriers due to their status or position in society. Moving forward, it is absolutely essential for communities, law enforcement agencies, and society as a whole to work together to address and prevent domestic violence. This includes providing survivors with access to support services, implementing training programs for law enforcement officers, and challenging the systems of power and oppression, which enable abuse to thrive. By standing together and supporting survivors, we can create a world where all individuals are empowered to seek help and to live free from fear. Barbara's journey may have been fraught with obstacles, but her courage and resilience serve as an inspiration to us all as we continue to strive for a future free from abuse. If you believe in the power of conversation, in dismantling the silence which shrouds domestic abuse, and in fostering empathy, then I invite you to be a part of the Memento Mori Stories community. Subscribe to our channel to stay engaged with thought-provoking stories, discussions, and creative expressions. Together, we can be a force for awareness, understanding, and healing. Your subscription is not just a click. It's a pledge to be a part of a movement which embraces the power of storytelling to bring about positive change. Remember, every voice matters, and yours can be a catalyst for good. Subscribe, share, and let's continue this journey together. 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 The painting I've been working on today is actually for a collaboration between myself and Apex Apparel in Edmonton. You guys won't be seeing this video until March, but I'm currently recording the voiceover on February 13th, 2024, and it's just before 5 p.m. As of right now, I've only completed a little bit of the line work, so I can't tell you how long it's gonna take me, but I'll pop the total number of hours up on the screen now. It's nine by 12 inches and composed of watercolor and gouache paint, Posca pen, India ink, Sakura Pigma Micron pens, and some kind of gilding foil, I'm sure, on 300 GSM cold pressed block. This one won't be available for purchase, 
but many of my other original works are available for sale, and my books are currently open to custom commissioned work as well. Additionally, I have an incredibly limited number of prints available for purchase. These are 9 by 12 inches on archival quality cardstock and they go for 35 Canadian dollars each or 50 for two. I ship for free across Canada, but I'm happy to ship globally for a nominal fee as well. I am also opening my books to offer graphic design and branding consultations for serious clients. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please send me an email to hello at stageleftproject.ca. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate, and never underestimate the impact of your voice. Remember, one day you will die. But for now, live well. Ciao for now. <laughs>